Africa is the new frontier. Nobody's kidding us about this. If anyone tells us that African, Africa can develop, they are only trying to put us down. We have to realize that a lot of the wealth in the world is created where we are standing on. This, is, this ground is extremely valuable land that we are standing on, this continent of Africa. And if we don't realize it, millions of people are making so much money on us, we need to start realizing that this is where it is, get together as Africans and do what other people are doing with our wealth. If someone ever told me that this hotel belongs to an African, I wouldn't believe it. So I just want to tell you that, first of all, congratulations, and thank you so much for being an African, not an African. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I saw that on your t-shirt, actually. Oh, you saw that on Absolutely. my t-shirt? Absolutely. I notice all these small details always. Oh, wow. Because yeah. I'm trying to tell Africans <laughs> that it's possible in Africa. Yes. My name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana, on a journey to change the narrative and also celebrate African excellence. If I'm here today, standing here with you, I'm here to celebrate you, man. And I'm here to celebrate ah. you, too. <laughs> huh? Tell me your name, who you are, and I mean, what do you do? I am Malesala, um, a Gambian. Okay. I'm a village boy too, because uh, I come from the ghetto. My family comes from the ghetto in Banjul. They, actually, it's an area that was called that that is called Half Dai. Why is it called Half Dai? Because there was a pandemic and it killed half of the population. Oh. So it's a very historic part of Banjul, but um, it where where a lot of migrants who moved in the, into the Gambia went to live, and eventually it actually produced a lot of leaders for this country. So you are a descendant of a migrant? I am a descendant of a migrant. My, fa my grandfather was from St. Louis in Senegal. Oh. Yes. So you are born and raised in the Gambia? Born and raised in the Gambia from a Gambian father. And my mother, she passed away four months ago. May Allah grant her the highest Jannah. And uh, she was a wonderful woman. But uh, she, she was from Suriname. Hmm. Yes, Suriname in South America. Whoa. Yes. So this is like Caribbean represent. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's an African Caribbean whole mixture. Amazing. You <laughs> ever left the continent? I have. I uh, actually went to school in the U.S. Okay. Yeah. I uh, went to school uh, and lived in the U.S. for 12 years, and at the completion of my education, I decided to come back to my uh, homeland. You. you I thought you got all your money that you're supposed to get in the U.S. before you moved in here. There's something. U.S. ain't giving you no money, my brother. Come on. What do you mean by ah. U.S. is not giving you money? The U.S. only takes money away from you. <laughs> haven't you heard that yet? I don't know, unless you tell me. Uncle Sam, I, haven't I, you heard I, of the no, Uncle Sam no, phenomenon? No, I've never been there. <laughs> what does the Uncle Sam phenomenon mean? Uncle Sam gives, but Uncle Sam takes more than he gives. Wow, I'm learning that for the first time. So, this is where it is. Our motherland, our fatherland, our homeland, Africa, is where it is. You can't this is where a lot of the wealth of the world actually is made. They come and take what we own and go and make money with it and come and sell it back to us. So we need to start realizing that it's time to make it ourselves here. Why is that happening then? Well, I, we, we must take some of the blame. We, have, we, we must take some of the blame, but it's time for us to wake up and take responsibility and take charge of our destiny. So this is what brought two Gambians mm. back home. One went to school in the UK. I went to my partner, Omar Jawara. I went to school in, uh, in America. Okay. We came back home. I studied politics. He is a lawyer, childhood friends. And we decided to come together, form a partnership, and start business. Childhood friend? You guys grew up together in the Gambia? We grew up together, yes. We were basically almost living opposite each other. But, but from, from born and raised in the ghetto, how did you find yourself in America then? Actually, what happened, mm -hmm. um, our grandfathers, they educated on my side. He educated his children. My father became successful okay. and managed to be able to afford to send us to go to school in okay. the U.S. We didn't have a university in Gambia then. 
Now we do. But then, when I was growing up, we had no university in the Gambia. So the only option we had was to go either to uh, a, a university in the sub-region or go to study in the States. So I was lucky enough to go to the States. I, uh, it was a very good experience for mm. me. Mm. It exposed me to the world. Mm. And I brought back everything I learned back home. That's really beautiful, man. Um, let me know. This hotel belongs to you and your friend. Yes. How many of this hotel have you built so far? We have five hotels. We, we own and operate five hotels. Own and operate five hotels? Yes. And all of them are in the Gambia? They are all in the Gambia. So basically, we are the leaders in the hotel industry in the country. Before we got into this business, um, Gambians had just started taking over this industry. Mm. Um, we got in the right place, the right time. And eventually, we became the biggest hoteliers in the country. Let me let me understand here. Yeah. What is the inspiration behind you and your friend coming together to say that you know what? Let's build a hotel. What inspired that? Um, basically, tourism contributes 25 percent to our GDP. Mm -hmm. So it's the most uh, important industry for this country. Um, agriculture is there, tourism is there, but uh, we saw an opportunity in tourism, hmm. and uh, we saw we we we, we realized that our world vision um, could be implemented quite well in developing the tourism sector of this country. Mm. And when we decided to come home, worked in the system, Omar was a prosecutor um, in, in the courts, and uh, I uh, actually worked with the Independent Electoral Commission of the Gambia. Okay. Um, after serving our nation um, publicly, we decided to get into a private partnership okay. and uh, develop this very important industry of our country. Gambia doesn't have oil, we don't have gold, we don't have bauxite. We have beautiful beach and we have wonderful sun and beautiful people, nice people, which is a good recipe for tourism. So we saw the opportunity there. Um, it was at that time mainly controlled by foreigners actually. Wow. And we decided that we were going to come into this industry and we are going to make this industry Gambian and show the whole world that we can do it better than everybody else. Which means that it's possible to make it in Africa then? It's absolutely possible. If You know how many people make it out, in and out of Africa? No, no. I mean, I mean listen, I, I represent the youth in here. Yes. And the youth of Africa normally says that, you know what, for us to make it in life, we have to go out there before we come back to make it. It's, but you are here and telling us that it's possible to make it in Africa. And you've actually done it. It's very possible to make it here. It's, it's, it's okay to go, go out there and, you know, broaden your w world knowledge mm. to g give you a, a, a bigger picture of the world. Okay. But in the end of the day, this is where is this. Africa is the new frontier. Nobody's kidding us about this. If anyone tells us that Africa can develop, they are only trying to put us down. We have to realize that a lot of the wealth in the world is created where we are standing on. This, is, this ground is extremely valuable land that we are standing on this continent of Africa and if we don't realize it millions of people are making so much money on us we need to start realizing that this is where it is get together as Africans and do what other people are doing with our wealth you are opening my mind today and I would love to ask you so many questions what are the kind of opportunities that do you think Africans can take advantage of um, we, we of course know that Africa is the wealthiest continent in the world. Mm. As far as uh, natural resources, God has endowed us with so many natural resources. Um, on top of that, we also know that Africans are very strong people. Mm. You know, we have good genes, we are strong people. I mean, if you see all these opportunities that God has given us, and on top of that, he has given us the strength, the power to be able to work hard, and to create things and to uh, develop this, this, this continent of ours. I think God has given us enough. Now it's up to us Africans to take what he has given us and do something out of it. What was your first ever hotel that you built in the Gambia? The first hotel actually we did not build. We took it over from uh, some investors that built a hotel but did not know how to manage it. Um, we came in as a political scientist and a lawyer 
and basically convince those people that we can run this hotel for them. So basically, we got into this business by accident. Oh. Yes. But uh, we dedicated our time, studied how, it, how, how, how running a hotel worked, because we had seen the opportunities of this country. Okay. Tourism was growing, um, and uh, the Gambian personality, the Gambian weather, I mean, the Gambian beaches, they were ripe for tourism. And they were just waiting for someone to come and take advantage, a positive advantage of them. And uh, so we convinced these guys, listen, we can do this. If you cannot do it, give it to us, we'll do it. They were not Gambians. They were not Gambians. We took over that hotel. We ran it successfully. We turned it into uh, a profitable venture. And eventually, another opportunity came up with the same, same kind of arrangement. Mm. People built hotels and they did not know how to manage them. We had, at this point, gained enough experience in how to manage and run hotels. So Omar and myself decided that it was time to go to number two. So we convinced the owner to also give us the opportunity, um, of course, and we totally stripped the whole hotel off, renovated it and brought it up to, at that time, you know, a very modern and uh, a, a very modern hotel. Mm. Uh, Gambia as a country is, co is competing with so many other destinations. Yeah. So one thing that was important was to have this mindset that when you build a property, it is not only concrete that is sitting there. If concrete sits there and you are not dynamic and you don't change it and modernize it and keep it well maintained and keep the service up to world level standards, mm. you will become number three or number four. You're not going to become number one. So we realized very quickly that the best way to do it was to modernize. But modernization using African impl inputs. If you look at your room, mm. most of the furniture in your room was made actually not only in Gambia, but in our backyard, we brought in talented kids Whoa. and they made the furniture in your room. So which means that everything in here was made and produced in the Gambia. In your room, I would say 80% um, of uh, the furniture in your room was made in the Gambia. One thing we realized also in our construction, because mm. we're building massive buildings, mm. and uh, we find some, we, nature has been there before us. And uh, our ancestors, they respected nature. You know? sure. So one thing we've brought into our um, concepts is that we very rarely, very, very rarely fell trees. We don't cut down trees. We don't here. cut down trees. Where, and where we cut down trees, we will replace it by 20 mature trees. Now I will give you a good example of how we respect nature. If you look at this environment, you see a building at the back yeah. and you see a building in the front. Yeah. So this but if you look at the right side, yeah. you only see one, one building. building. No building here. Normally, this building you see on the left should have been mirrored on this yeah, side. Exactly. But look at this. We found this beautiful, majestic, and most probably few hundred years old baobab tree. Yeah? So what we decided as a, as, a, as a policy was that we would actually exclude building an extra building here and preserve this beautiful tree which yeah. in our, we, we believe that once we preserve nature, nature protects us back. And I think True. this is why you see True. our gardens are lush. Yeah, it, it's so beautiful. You know? It actually lies in here every morning. Yes, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Yeah, so we, we, we actually do not compromise developing a property um, by, uh, by, by affecting the natural en environment of, 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 of one, the area. One thing that I want to say kudos on is the way you guys design your pools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the way you see the building and the pool in front, yeah. and even the pool at the middle, and I'm like, yo, this is well designed. Are you the same person who designed it? We have a lot of input in designing our properties, and we also have a lot of input in the construction. Hmm. Because whenever we, con whenever we construct a hotel, we are the project man managers. I mean, Tamara is a big development, but we built it in one year because we spent every day of that one year here in, this, in the project. But you were talking about pools. I really believe that water enhances a property. 
So I would really advise anyone who is uh, looking into building a hotel, mm. in, especially in Africa where the weather is nice, you have the sunshine, um, we don't have adverse, in, in, in this region, sub-region anyways, mm. we don't have really adverse uh, weather systems. I would advise that you use as much water in your, um, in your planning as possible because it adds so much value to your project. You will find out all our hotels, if you look at Balafong, if you look at Kalimba, if you look at uh, Tamala, these are the three hotels that we have built. You will find that they are surrounded by water. I've seen that. Yeah. Well, I, and which means that you started managing a hotel, mm -hmm. and your first hotel that was built was the money that was made from managing. And yes, built. absolutely. So which one, out of the three, which one is the first one? Though? The first one is Balafong. Yes. Can you, can you take me there? Yes, I can. We oh. can go visit Balafong and you will see that uh, when the vision to build a hotel mm. was totally based on African uh, architecture and Balafong gave that to us. We wanted to build a hotel that was designed after the African hut. A little bit modernized. But when you look at Balafong as a hotel, mm. you will see the African architecture, you will see the African touch on the buildings, you will see the grass roofs. And really, if anyone who is coming to visit our continent mm. as a tourist wants to experience what is Africa, don't put them on a high-rise 20, 30, 30 floor building. They already see that wherever they come from. So you have to make your, if we are talking about tourism, mm. you have to make your development as Afrocentric as possible. And we have to be proud of our African architecture. If you go to Thailand, if you go to the Far East, you will see architecture, you will see uh, furniture design, you will see that those people are very proud of what is theirs. Let us also, we have, I mean, our forefathers, great thinkers. If you, if you look at the artwork around the world, I mean, you, in Nigeria, if you look at the artwork that has come from yeah. Nigeria, that has been actually stolen and is being, uh, being exhibited in the best museums in the world. Come on, I mean, we, we need to develop, we need to take what is ours and develop it into what we call this modern African art and modern African architecture. And when, once we do that, you will see that Africa has the nicest people in the world. Africa has wonderful weather. Africa has wonderful landscapes. We have beautiful beaches. You will see that Africa can become the, the number one tourist destination in the world. You said Africa can be. Yes. Why Africa is not the number one travel destination in the world? I think to a point, um, we need to respect more what is ours. You know, um, I, I encourage a Ghanaian or a Nigerian tourist to come to Gambia instead of going to Dubai. You know, I mean, you see those people spending money on other people, okay? Why go and spend, spend it here? Yeah, because then we develop each other. We develop our countries, you know? We develop our people. We develop our countries. We create more brotherhood. Once African tourists come to an African country, you will find out that you are creating more brotherhood between African countries. And I think for us to move forward as a continent, we need to find more synergies as Africans. You know, trade, we need to trade more. We need to open our borders to each other. You know, it's sad that um, Chinese can t trade better in our continent than and Africans. take our wealth and take it to China or any other nation can do that. But an African doing business with an other African, there's uh, always some sort of, uh, there are always limitations and there are always struggles. I mean, I look at if I want to import something from Senegal, I have to go through the Gambian border. If Senegalese want to come to Gambia, they have to go through a border. We are one, we speak the same f language, we eat the same food, we intermarry. You know, there has to be free trade between us because that is the only way that we can develop each other. Free and fair trade, of course. Very important. It has to be free, but it has to be fair. If you, like, let me understand. 
if let's say free fair trade among ourselves what do you think will happen to the continent wow imagine you have all the wealth in this continent mm. okay imagine if we use all our all our intellectual resources all our manpower resources you know all all our experiences as africans what has been what is good about us and what you know people have done to us and take all of this and bring it together and decide that hey as a people we are going to be number one in the world the chinese did it in how many years has china developed if you talk about gambian hotels if you talk about gambian um um, uh, the, the Gambian hospitality business and the Gambian tourism business right now. You cannot do it without talking about our two companies, Jaliba Leisure Group and uh, Balafon Company Limited. And you will not do it without talking about Tamara. So we have to take over. We have to take charge. I, I, I'm so impressed and I want to um, tell you all something from today onwards. If you ever think that oh you're going to Dubai, you're going to London, you're going to Paris for a ho as a holiday destination. No. Choose the Gambia. And whenever you choose the Gambia, you choose Tamala. Absolutely. And I mean it's it's a fact. I mean Tamala has become the leading hotel in the country and uh, it's one hundred percent owned by us. Brother Maya, welcome to Kalimba. Whoa, it's Kal so beautiful out here. Kalimba is the baby of the group. It's the, the latest. Baby. It's the latest hotel we built. Whoa, so which means this came after? This came after Ka Tamal. Tamal. Yes, yes. Listen, I want to tell you something. I love the fact that you guys appreciate nature. Yeah, yeah. all these places full of trees, man. I don't think you planted these trees. These trees were here. Um, a lot of the trees we planted in this uh, development. We plant uh, that are present in this development. We planted ourselves. There's a simple equation on this: take care of nature. Nature takes care of you. Billion. What makes Kalimba unique from others? In Kalimba, we brought in more of the African architecture. We basically it was a marriage when the architect asked. So, what kind of a um, concept do you want? Mm. I said to him, I want a marriage between Balafong and Tamala. So um, Balafong was a success story, Tamala was a success story. If you bring them together, it can only be a success story. This is beautiful, man. Like, I am here and I feel like not going back to Ghana. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome to stay. Ghana is uh, part of Africa and we are all Africans. So Ghana, Gambia, all G, we share a lot of things together. So, you know, hey. I love the fact that you love talking about Africa. Man. I love my continent. How proud I love are my you? People. I mean, how proud are you of being an African? I am a proud African. Um, I, I, I am a proud African. I come from a very proud African heritage. So does my partner. Um, our fathers have been uh, great Africans in their own way. His father as a businessman and my father as a master marina. Actually, uh, he captained one of the ships that Kwame Nkrumah, the great Kwame Nkrumah, um, set up the Black Star Line. My father was one of the captains on the, pra on the pra River. Whoa. So um, his father, Omar's father, was actually uh, a big businessman and he actually was the first Gambian to own a proper hotel in the Gambia. I wanted to ask you the core value behind your success. I, this is what I say to um, a lot of young people come and ask me, so what advice would you give me? I say to them, number one, you have to be patriot. You have to realize that uh, you are nothing without the country that you are from. We have to respect our heritage because we don't know, we will never know where we are going if we don't know where we are coming from. 
we have to be um, honest because honesty is everything. We have to be hardworking because what work ethics is what drives. And I also, you know, they say lock, lock, lock in, in anything in life. Um, when, when you see these things happen, there must be an element of luck. But I don't think it's luck. I believe when people have integrity, when people are honest, when people have to drive and work hard, because that's the only way you build things, by working, God opens the door for you. Listen, this question that I'm going to ask you right now, it's a question that so many Africans have been asking. It's so expensive to travel in Africa, but is it so expensive to live in here? Yeah. Um, you will find Gambia, and I mean, with the standards of hotels that you have, mm. value for money, mm. you will find uh, most probably you can maybe even fly to Gambia, sustain yourself for a week, including a hotel, food, board, drinks, and everything, for what it might cost you to spend a weekend in Lagos or in Accra, or even in Dhaka. This is why a lot of Senegalese now have discovered Tamala, they've discovered Gambia, and they've seen that there's a lot of value for their money when they come to visit us. And I mean, we have world-class hotels, um, and uh, they can come and uh, the hotels are quite good value for money. Yeah. So on the issue of uh, um, um, expensive uh, mode of travel, of course, I think this is something that our governments need to really start looking into. Yeah. We need to improve the way that we communicate between our countries because uh, that's the way we can draw our borders closer to each other. And this is how, I mean, it, it should not be easier to travel from, uh, from Accra to Dubai than from Accra to Banjul. It should not be. And our government, I think it is their responsibility to make the ground um, amenable for investors who want to invest in the airline industry. Once you as a Ghanaian realize that when I come to invest in your country, I'm your brother, yeah. you should rather me come and invest in Ghana, Ghana. and you sh your government should support me more than they should maybe an Indian or a Chinese. Because in the end of the day, if we don't develop our sub-region together, we can never develop this continent, you know? And I mean, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. The South Americans, are, they, they realize that they have to develop, you know, within uh, regions. Southeast Asia, they are doing it. Europe has done it already, you know? So we need to really start thinking about how we can bring all our strengths together to build our sub-region. And in so doing, once all the sub-regions are built up, we, our continent can be where it should be. Is it the last project that you're doing? No. This hey. is, uh, how can it be? Come on, I'm st am I still not young and vibrant <laughs> and I still have too much energy. I'm not retiring yet. No, 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 no. We still have a lot to do. What is our next project then? Um, our next project is, uh, we're building a mini city. Mini city? Yes. We're building a, a development that uh, encompasses uh, a hotel. It will uh, include uh, luxury villas. It's going to include some uh, high-rise apartment buildings. It will include uh, a small hospital. It will include a commercial center, mall, restaurants on the beach. So it's a beachfront uh, development that uh, we will start um, construction before the end of the year. It's a three-year project, and we encourage any, any, any of your viewers that uh, want to come and invest in the Gambia. It's really good investment opportunity. And uh, again, like, we are not jealous to invite other Africans to come and build the Gambia with us because, again, we are building Africa. I think the next time I'm going to come in here, it's going to be so difficult to know that, okay, I was here two years ago. How, how come this place has changed? Because yeah. a lot of stuff are happening in the Gambia. Yeah. Um, listen, you lived abroad, and I know that you have a message for Africans living abroad. Yeah. What would that message be? Africa is open to you. Um, a lot of non-Africans see the opportunities here and they are coming in and they are taking advantage of opportunities that belong to us. So my message to um, Africans in the diaspora is work hard, educate yourself, you know, save and come, come and reinvest in this continent, beautiful continent of ours. Um, 
this whole concept that we Africans who are here do not want them to come and join us. I think it's wrong. We encourage, we encourage um, Africans and not, for example, me as a Gambian, I encourage not only Gambians, but Africans in the diaspora to come and make Gambia their home and to come and invest in this country. Let's take ownership of our continent. You know, I love the fact that you always talk about let's take ownership of our continent, which means that you've seen a lot, you've experienced a lot, seeing how other people from different parts of the world are taking advantage of the continent. Yeah. Which means you have a message for continental Africans then. Yeah, I mean, for continental Africans, um, work hard, be honest, and welcome Africans from the diaspora. Um, I think we need to, between us, between Africans, we need to create tighter bonds. Mm. We need to have more protection for each other. Mm. And we need to give more opportunities to each other. So all these uh, di different filters that are put in our, our, our systems um, for, to, 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 to promote, for example, um, indigenous um, invest, in, investors, I think we, start need to, we need to start also looking at pro protecting and also giving certain facilities to African investors. From this, I need to ask you then, what has been the major challenge that you face establishing this as a Gambian in the Gambia? Major challenge. Um, the, 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 the biggest challenge was not creating the hardware. The biggest challenge was the software. To find, I mean, when, when you build a world-class hotel, of course you have to run it as a world-class entity. And um, it was very difficult to find the right personnel um, locally to, to run it from the beginning and to get the engine running from the beginning to the standards that we wanted. But we did not relent on this. What we did actually was we looked at a few Gambians that were in the diaspora, that, were, that already had experience in uh, major hotels in the world, and we brought them back home. And we gave them these key positions, and their jobs were to make sure that from day one, our ship was sailing smoothly, but more importantly, to also share the knowledge that they have gained working in world-class hotels, also with the, the local staff. Hmm. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would it be? Wow, <laughs> that's, a, that's a wonderful question. I think um, one thing I would like, if, if I had a chance to change one thing, I would like to see Africans respect what is ours more. I would like to see Africans respect each other more. I would like to see Africans put their hands together to develop this continent faster. I don't think we are doing enough of that. I don't think uh, we are enough in solidarity with, other, with each other. And really, I task all our leaders to start thinking this way, to start thinking about how once we create um, bigger trading groups between each other, we keep our resources here. Once we, I mean, why should I be buying, for example, um, cement from Italy when I can buy cement from Nigeria? I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. If somebody want to uh, book uh, a hotel in here, what are the procedures that they need to follow? Well, um, Google the hotels, go to www.tamalaresort.com. Go to www.balafongresort.com, www.kalimbaresort.com and be sure that if you book, we will take very good care of you and you will also have an opportunity to meet me because I am, I am, <laughs> you know what, uh, I am everywhere. Here, tell him that what am I from me. I want him to hear my name all the time so that he never forgets me. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you all in the next one. My name is still Mr. Ghana Baby, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. See you in the next one. Aya, Maya. Peace out.